Y'all fans are weird. And I'm not talking about a fan in the Kendrick Lamar sense as a I'm talking about fan culture. Like that shit is mad weird. You know that, right? Celebrity culture and fan communities have become ubiquitous aspects of modern society, permeating every facet of media from films and music to books and television. The intense connection that many people feel towards celebrities, whether they're famous musicians, actors, or reality TV stars, reflect deep psychological processes. And if I'm being honest, the shit is creepy as fuck. Sometimes. Like, why are we like this? Why do we worship celebrities so much? Real question. And for you saying, no, it's not me, yes, it's you too. You just don't even realize it. And if you're not obsessed with celebrity, then you're obsessed with some kind of fan culture. But I'll get back to you in a second. You fanboys and girls are not off the hook, trust me. Here's the thing. We use celebrity as a mirror to ourselves. Nah, for real. Celebrities often serve as proxies for the audience's desires, ideals, goals, and aspirations. This mirroring effect is rooted in a psychological phenomenon known as parasocial interaction, where individuals from one-sided relationships with media figures invest them with emotional energy as if they were real-life acquaintances. Famous figures from diverse spheres, such as Beyonce in music or Leonardo DiCaprio in film, embody qualities we admire and aspire to. By identifying with celebrities, individuals find a way to explore different facets of their personalities and life possibilities in a safe and abstract way. But like, idolizing these motherfuckers come with inherent risks. Celebrities are just humans, just like us fans, and their moral lapses or eventual failures often lead to disappointment within fans. This disillusionment is often exacerbated by the media's dichotomous portrayal of celebrities as either flawless idols or flawed mortals, with little room for the complex reality of human nature. It's like we look at celebrities as if they're either gods or demons, no in between. So the minute they fuck up one time, we're disappointed beyond understanding and beyond reason, which is crazy because a lot of the things that we will admonish a celebrity for, we either do or we know someone that does the thing in our real lives. It's wild. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about the freak shit. The freak shit is celebrity freak shit. And if we saw somebody doing that freak shit, hopefully we would turn their asses in too. F the freak shit. But besides that, we become irrationally upset at things that are inherently human. Or we expect these celebrities to be our mouthpieces for whatever causes or agendas that we have in our own lives. So if they don't speak up for or against whatever thing that we want them to, we become upset because we gave them the power we gave them the fame, right? But at the same time, if they speak up for something that they believe in but we don't necessarily agree with, we demonize them even further. Or if they speak up in the wrong way or come with misinformation, we crucify them as if our knowledge of the subject was always where it is now. Or even in a completely different direction, some people feel entitled to these people's personal lives, wanting to know who they're dating, where they're living, what they're eating, even going so far as to be as invasive as to speculate someone's pregnancy just because they look a little bloated. And if these people don't give us intense personal details about their lives, we become more curious and more invasive and go even further looking into these subjects when we know good and goddamn well if we were in their position, we wouldn't want these intimate details about our lives being passed to the entire world. Ultimately, this shit just becomes us looking for validation from these people who are human beings looking for the same things that we are in life. I'm telling you, we are weird as fuck. Like we're looking for these personal mascots to represent our goals and aspirations and causes and whatever we feel in life. Oftentimes we'll build communities around our favorite celebrities, framing it as if it's a love for their work, but becoming more interested in who they are than what they produce with their talent. And these communities are even worse because they'll validate our personal feelings and allow us to go even deeper into these celebrities' lives and how we admire them and interact with them. We'll even, we'll even do things like pick up whatever feuds that they're having with other celebrities and their fan bases and attack them as if whatever they're doing has something to do with our personal lives. You can see this with like the most recent rap feud between Kendrick Lamar and Drake. Core audiences dug their heels in the dirt claiming that their side won the battle no matter what happened. Almost taking the loss of this rap battle as a personal loss in their own lives even though 99.9% .9 of the people that cared about this rap battle do not know Kendrick Lamar or Drake and have no actual connection to them in reality. Like word, I saw people crying, I saw people changing narratives, I saw people bending and twisting reality to fit whatever they had in mind or whatever narrative that they were trying to push for their favorite out of the two. It's wild. All the while, both of these niggas made millions. In a similar vein, the manufactured feud between Beyonce and Taylor Swift by the media and fans alike has caused discourse for years 
And it makes no sense. No matter how much these women come out and say they have no issues, they're not competing against each other, we put them against each other. It's weird. Like we're trying to make it seem as if one woman's success is the other's failure. Like they don't have completely different approaches to music and crafting art and performing. There is no overlap between these two and yet we somehow put them against each other. And because there is a narrative that these two women are competing against each other, fan bases have latched onto that and become nasty towards each other. It becomes one giant group think. As a group, we'll criticize a celebrity that we feel doesn't have any talent or doesn't contribute to society or culture. And the main reason because of that is because it reflects poorly on us. If this person that we collectively feel has no talent and they're more wealthy, successful, and appear to be more happy than us, then what does that say about us? It must mean we're failures, right? And a lot of you are saying, no, I don't feel that way at all. It's not a conscious thing. All of this stuff is lying underneath the surface and there are things that we don't even realize that we're doing. And our common communities online echo these feelings and it becomes one giant echo chamber that love or hate something because it's popular. Or in some cases, love or hate it because it's unpopular. Fan communities start to have one collective brain. But fan communities extend beyond just admiration of celebrities to encompass whole fictional universes such as those created by Marvel, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, or Lord of the Rings. I told you fanboys and fangirls I was coming back for that ass, didn't I? These franchises offer more than just escapism. They provide a shared language and framework within which each fan can interact, create, and feel as if they belong. The rise of the internet has facilitated the growth of these communities, enabling them to connect, discuss, and co-create content, exploring the boundaries of the original work. And don't get me wrong, the participatory culture of this can be great. It can make people feel empowered and welcome, but it also sets the stage for clashes and conflict when different interpretations of the source material emerge. What we have with these different types of fan cultures is one of the oldest human traditions of tribalism. Tribalism at its core is a social construct rooted in human evolutionary history. It refers to a strong sense of identity and loyalty towards one's own group, be it identified by ethnicity, social class, nationality, or any other distinctive markers, often accompanied by a corresponding hostility towards those not belonging to the group. This behavior helped our ancestors survive by creating communities and sticking together, but in modern society, it kind of manifests itself in more complex and sometimes problematic ways. In politics, for instance, tribalism is evident in its often polarized allegiance to parties or ideologies. You can see this division with liberals and conservatives in the United States or Brexit supporters and opponents in the UK. It's a similar thing with fan culture, where loyalty to a franchise or genre can often spur toxic and problematic behaviors. Fans will often split into factions with different characters or interpretations or plot developments happen, often becoming angry at different artistic directions. You can see this with the reactions to the recent Star Wars films or the Game of Thrones finale, where there was tremendous fan backlash because it didn't go the way they wanted it to go. And if you happen to be one of those fans that like these things, then you're on the wrong side and they attack you too. In fan culture, tribalism can lead to exclusionary practices where outsiders or casual fans are derided or even bullied. This gatekeeping ensures that only those who conform to the group's consensus are welcome, which stifles creativity and discussion. Now this sometimes escalates into harassment of those who think differently, including creators and fellow fans. Y'all ran George Lucas out of Star Wars. We cling to whatever we feel is right and shun everything else. The connection between tribalism and fan culture as a whole is very deep with how we see each other, how we want to be seen and how we feel. We want a sense of belonging, we want a sense of identity, we don't like change, and we want things that we can cling on to. All of these things can reduce complex thought into simple us versus them dichotomies. Now don't get me wrong, fan communities can be incredibly inclusive and loving and welcoming, but they can also be very dark. Sometimes you have a hyper fixation on the canon and don't wanna change what you already know and establish as the world in your head. The intense and personal investment into these fictional worlds can sometimes lead to aggressive gatekeeping where fans police those who can or cannot be considered true fans based on an arbitrary criteria. These communities are supposed to be open and welcome to similar minded people that enjoy the same things and yet they will often exclude women or people of color or anybody that doesn't fit what their ideals are, which is kind of the opposite of what these communities set themselves up to be. 
But then again, at the same time, you got to realize that you can start your own community and not be a part of the toxicity of the fan communities that want to exclude you. And the same thing happens with celebrity culture, where if you like don't buy this type of merch, you can't be a real fan. Or you haven't been listening since this album, so you can't truly love this person. And you're just on the bandwagon. Even deeper than that, we, for whatever reason, feel the need for someone or something else to fail in order for what we love or ourselves to succeed. As if there's only a certain amount of success available. Truth be told, fan culture is ultimately just escapism from our own lives. Life is rough, so we want to see a perfect human being that we can project ourselves onto. We want to tear down someone that we perceived as perfect at one point so that we don't feel like we're the only ones that are fucked up. We want to feel like we're a part of a community so that we don't feel so alone. Real talk, I don't even know if these are good or bad things, it's honestly just human nature. And you can see the same patterns in everything, whether it's religion, or politics, or school, or fashion, or art. We want to see ourselves in all of these things. We want a sense of community, we want a sense of belonging, and we want someone we can look up to. Look, the intense connection that we feel to celebrities in these fan cultures or communities or these properties is symptomatic of what's going on in life. We yearn for escapism. We want to feel community. We want to get away from the mundanity and stress of everyday life. There's an interesting psychological connection between celebrities, between fan cultures, between us loving these things and the way we interact in real life. Again, I'm not really even knocking it. All of this is just symptomatic of human nature, and you can see it through the history of everything. Look, to sum it up, it's okay to be a fan. Just don't be fucking weird, weirdo.